Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, just taking the time today to make this uh, small, quick, hopefully quick, Arcuid guide that uh, guide that a lot of people, not a lot, but a couple of people have been asking for, and I said I was going to go through the whole cast. So I thought this would be a good time to, you know, maybe sit down and try to do something that's kind of put together like the other ones. The CL one was kind of scattered because I just had a random thought, but this will be more in line with the, uh, you know, like the Ushu Akamaru and the Kanto Monte Cristo guide that I had before. Alright, so, Archimed. She's. Her archetypes are a very rushdown oriented type character. Like, once she gets in your space, you have to figure out how to get out because she has a lot of moves that put her at a very advantageous space when she does a rebeat. So, a lot of her special moves can kind of catch, catch you trying to jump or flinch real quickly. And a lot of her special moves also have a lot of plus range, so it's kind of hard to escape sometimes. Uh, her her movement's probably the best in the game. Like her dash speed is, if not the best, one of the best. And then her air dash is just super fast. It's like really hard to pin her down right away. And then she has a lot of normals that uh, intercept you in the air and on the ground as well. So one of the first things, five A. It's pretty for five A. It's not that. It's not as big as you think it is from this hitbox right here. But it's still pretty big. You can kind of like space people to figure out, like, okay, are you trying to mash, are you trying to jump? So 5 a is a good tool to keep people, like, in check, and then you can start start your block screen. Like that. Or if you get a hit, you confirm. Then you got 5B. It's like a nice forward-moving normal that complements 5A, so you would do that. You do 5A, 5B, move forward, keep pressure, figure out what your combo is supposed to be. Uh, you have charge 5B, which is an overhead. You have to stand up to block it. Do I have the dummy set to block everything? Yeah. Oh. 5B, you have to block that overhead. So, uh, if it gets shielded, you can just cancel to a special move. So you're not like stuck doing... You know, you're not stuck doing just charge 5B. As long as you have access to other normals, you can go to the other normals. So you can do... So you can keep them crouching low, blocking, and you, keep, you have to keep your turn. You, you mix in an overhead with your offense is really scary to fight. Then you have 5C. It reaches really far. It, she takes like a big step forward, so it's kind of hard to like contest her sometimes and try to jump out the corner. So if you if you time this correctly in the corner, people try to jump, they get hit by that. Uh, the next one, next move after 5C is charge 5C. Uh, that's unblockable. You have to high shield it. You cannot low shield this move. This move has to be high shielded. So, you high shield, you get out. You can force it to clash throughout its duration with like 2A, 2A, 5A, 5A, but that requires a little bit of precision, and a lot of people aren't going to be ready for that. So you can use this as a, as a, uh, you know, cheeky type unblockable move where people have to get ready to, you know, get away from it. Like shield it, moon drive through it, heat it away, stuff like that. Or EX through it. Then you have 2A. Standard 2A, match that. Fast, slow, you know, just to it. To me, uh, her to be special because like it really shrinks her hurt box when she gets all the way down to the ground. It can be kind. Of, so if you're see seeing people jump in the air and air dash at you, you can kind of use to be to like as a pseudo anti air because instead of doing this, like the DP, which we'll get I'll get to later, to be actually shrinks your hurt box and makes it kind of hard for them to try to jump in on you. You can like make your hurt box smaller, you recover, and then you mash after. Or if they do, if they have poor movement in the air, this will just anti air them straight up, and you get a confirm. Uh, 2C. Her 2C is pretty fast for what it looks like. You would think this would be a little bit slower, but you can kind of just match this at a certain range, and if it hits, you can get a confirm. Like either with your next bar reaching normal that you have access to, or a special move that we'll get to later. But you know, you have a multitude of those. Um, she also has 4B, 4C, excuse me, 4C. It's like an auto launch type move for her. You have to air dash. It's like, it's what you use for combo filler. It's like, oh, did this hit? Cool. And now I got, you know, a small combo with it. Mostly it's, ooh, a combo, <laughs> supposed to put you in block. But yeah, mostly it's like a, just like a combo tool type thing. You don't really use it in like, you could use it to anti-air somebody if they're getting cheeky, but it's one of those things where they buffed this recent patch, the one in uh, December, where her, her 4C now like gets lower to the ground, so it's harder to hit her. 
Uh, just Reese. Everybody's dedicated anti-air. Hers got taller at the top where her finger, like, where that wave is. It got a little bit taller, so it's a lot easier to try to anti-air people air dashing you as well if you're not com comfortable with using 2B. Then you have jump A. Air dash, it's an overhead move. You have to stand up to block it. Like that. It's really good for contesting people in the air. Oh, actually, contesting people directly below you. This is really good. Next move, jump B. This hits twice. Notice how much basic comes in front of her if you uh, immediately do it in the air. So it's kind of hard to fight her in the air because a lot of you know this game is based a lot of a lot of the combat is based in the air trying to trying to get your positioning, trying to air dash at somebody, trying to figure out how to like get your turn. Her jump B makes it so hard for people to either approach you or to try to deny you. So if they're if they're approaching you, this makes it so that like if they get hit, it fatals because it's a two hitting air move. If it fatals, they fall to the ground no matter what. There's no untech time for them. It counts as a single hit, you have to do a full combo, it's really nice for her. Uh, for approaching people, it's still pretty good, but it's kind of tough because the first part, if you do it too early, they'll be able to crouch up. See? So you have to get to a certain space with jump B to hit them crouching. However, that's covered up by this next normal. Jump C. You can't charge it, but it doesn't matter because this thing is active forever. What do I mean by it's active forever? I did this from so far away that it's still active from like the middle of the timer. So I'll use my cursor here. This is where the timer is. I'm gonna jump back here. I'm gonna try to press jump C somewhere around this timer while I'm air dashing her. Oh, didn't make it there. Nope, didn't make it there either. But there is a specific distance where it's active enough for you to always hit somebody or force them to block. This move is amazing. If you're trying to approach someone on the ground, do this move. If you're trying to approach someone in the air above you, do this move as well. Jump C is probably one of the best normals in the game, which fits her seeing outside she's probably the co-MC of the game. So she's kind of privileged for having something so strong. Alright. And then uh, she has jump 2B. This. Her dive claw. You know, it's a downward motion. People just call it dive claw, dive kick. But dive claw. Uh, it's more it's more used to like um, to bait people to either mashing really late or throwing really late. So you do this, they try to throw you, this hits, you get a combo. So you would do, ah, uh, or you do, and then if they try to throw you, that hits them. Now, you can charge this, which means they have to stand up to block the charge version. So the normal version of Jump 2B is just, you know, down to B in the air. But then if you charge it, it's an overhead that they have to block. You can't cancel out of it, but it's it's done at the right spacing. It's plus enough to not get not to get mashed on. Next special moves: two through six. That's two through six A. That's the first part of her record. So you do two through six A, and that's what you get. Same thing for two, two through six B. It's just different distances that both of them go for. Two through six A, two through six B. Now you can do a follow-up to that. So 236AA, A, A, same thing with 236B. So 236B, B, 236B, A. It doesn't matter which next button you use to follow up. And this is always can. So you would press 236A and any other button to get the rest of that sequence. Now, the only thing that changes at the end of the sequence is this part, the last part. So that hits low. You see how she's down backing? That actually hits low. She has to block that low. So if you press the whole record through, like you do 236AAA like this, she has to block low for the last part. Now, if you want an overhead, you do 236, uh, 236AA, any button, and then back in any button. So the last part being back in any button gives you the overhead that you saw CL just stand to block. Like right there. Hello? That's the overhead by holding 4. So literally, as long as you do 236A or B, so 236A, 236B, 
you will get the start of Eureka. So you see how far it hits? At round start, it pretty much hits people for like not blocking, which is amazing. It's like a good, hey, are you blocking this tool? If you're not, well, guess what? If, do I have meter? I got a knockdown in the mix, so whee! All right. 236C, 214C yeah. is the X version of the Rekka. That pushes you full screen, gives you a knockdown. They're just like, oh no, I have to block your next mix up. Which is strong because they're in a corner, just based off of her run speed from earlier. Uh, the next set of motion is 623A. So, 623 series. So, that's a downward claw swipe, which has a follow up. You press any of the buttons afterwards, kind of like 226A. So, 623, so 6. 6 is forward, 2 is down, 3 is down forward. So, think of it like your DP motion. And you just press it really quickly. So, now 236A is, slow, is really fast and usually used in combos. But you could also like try to counter pull people with it as well. And then you press the follow up to send them flying, you know, confirm the rest of your combo if you have it. So if you if you ever hit the second part, you get the air dash at, uh, forward afterwards. Same thing with 63B. A 63B starts up slower, but it hits further from her. Which is also another trait to her pressure, meaning once I get her to block. That's that's really a plus. Having them block this makes it hard for them to retaliate with like a normal or a throw or trying to escape trying to run or jump. The only way they can get out of the pressure uh, without real consequence is some sort of invincible reversal. So something that's invincibility on it. But that can be baited by just doing like this and then down backy. So they try to DP after it whiffs, they get punished, you, you do big combo. Mm. Then there's the the EX version, 623C, which automatically launches them for you. So if you have meter and you're trying to like launch your point into the air, you would deal with something like that. So you get an automatic launch without having to think about it, and you use meter for free. It's nice. Uh, then you have 2-2-A, the 2-2 series, down, down. You double tap down, press A, B, or C, and you'll get and get her reversal. These can also be done in the air. 2-2-A, 2-2-B in the air, 2-2-C in the air. The air series does not retain invul. So you see how none of those say in invincibility? 2-2-A on the ground doesn't have invincibility, it's just really fast. However, 2-2-B starts up a little bit slower, but it has invincibility. And you see how far forward it goes? It's actually one of the harder DPs in the game to punish because she flies so far forward. And then 2CC has invincibility, it's an EX, get to burn a little bit more meter and go for further forward. Now, uh, 214. Elbow. So 214 series. 214A, no follow up. 214A doesn't have any additional follow up tied to it. You just do it once and you get like this elbow hitting one. This move is plus on block if spaced correctly. So if you do something like that's plus. It's hard for them to like mash to a right after because you're gonna hit them. You get a combo. And they're like, oh no, now I have to block arc with pressure. Uh, 214B, however, does that? That hit pushes all the way back. If your next tool, if you're close to the corner, what will happen is this when you do 214B. It's gives you a combo. So 214B is like your Combo tool type um, special move. This way I can get a block. And that's also plus if they block the second part. So, because they bounce back in the air, it's still plus. So you can kind of trick people to try to mash a button, jump, uh, shield. So if they mistime any of that, you can just press 5C and they get hit. So you would do something like this near the corner. Get to the corner, thank you. Like that. If they do anything that's not just land and block, usually this will hit them out of the air, counter hit them, punish their shield because they're trying to escape the air thinking it's air unblockable. It's not air unblockable. The situation here, unless Arcuid, let me actually tuck this down myself. Ooh. 
Yeah, it looks like the game is coded that if you do if you don't do anything while you're blocking this move, you can't be air unblockable at this height. So that's a nice forethought from the developers. See? Normally when you're in the air, blocking any special move on the ground will get hit. However, they're just like, yeah, we know that's probably going to happen. So as long as you don't press a button in the air as the defender here, you won't get unblockable. But as soon as you commit to another action that's not just landing the block, this hits you, this hits you, this hits you as well, and so on. So if you're arguing here, you're just like, hell yeah. This move's great. If they block this move, you can cancel to the next part, 214C, so you can like keep pressure. Speaking of 214C, when you do 214C either in neutral or in a combo, you get that ender. So you would do it. One, two, three, four, and you get a mix of all this. Which is really nice because that's one of the ways Arc creates pressure anywhere on the screen for free. If you have meter and you you're like, alright, I'm time it's time to mix you up, that's the best way to do it. Using using two and four C with meter. Uh, and then her moon skills. So her moon skills are you know extensions of her normal specials. Ford B plus C gives her that Rekka, which it's multiple times. It's good. It's it pushes really far forward, but it's you know only main use is not only main use. The biggest use is when you're moon drive and you want to force a clash. Press six B plus C. It's a move, horizontal moving hitbox that goes that far. You see how far it goes? It's really good for trying to hit people who are running at you or trying to like press a button in your face. Then you have two B plus C, which is. Or DP. But it doesn't have invincibility. It's just fast. It's just really fast. It can be thrown if time if they time it properly, but most people use this to like try to snipe movement in the air. Again, when you're moon drive, this causes clashes, you get the jump cancel on lift. You can't do that for six BC, you can't jump cancel this on lift. It's only two BC you get to do that way. Then you have four BC. Now when the four BC hits. You get that nice launcher where you can do like a small combo in the air. Or when it's blocked, you only get the elbow part, but that's still plus. So if you want to force your turn from like here and you think your opponent's gonna block, you can do something like that. I can just stay in. Again, same thing. Activate Moon Drive. If it clashes through anything, they they keep mashing, they get hit, you get a combo. So this is probably one of the best moon skills to use outside of moon drive because plus it keeps your turn it it approaches your opponent pretty quickly from like this part of the stage it's really nice uh the other part for our grid is when she's in heat so whenever you activate heat of blood heat with a b and c with at least one meter actually not even with heat it's as long as you have three bars or you're or you're in heat in regular heat or blood heat so and you do 236A plus B, you get this full screen super that full screen super that hits with invincibility at the beginning, and it's really hard to punish if it gets blocked. So that's something you can do if people are throwing projectiles at you from full screen. So if you're fighting a Vlav and you have either three bar or you're in blood heat or regular heat, and you see the Vlav just full screen spamming projectiles, what you can do is if you already have this meter, you wait for him to throw it, and then you do this. And as long as the Vlav doesn't have Moon Drive, this will always hit. Uh... Oh, one more important thing about Arcoid is her throw. Now, her normal throw, you know, just throws you to the other corner of the screen. However, she can change directions if you hold back. So, you hold back and throw, you'll throw them back away from her. Holding forward doesn't change anything. However, if you hold down, you get that throw where she throws you down and does a little bit more damage. So you can kind of like use that to approach and push to the corner. One big, big thing that she has over almost everybody in the cast is this. She can combo off of her forward throw in the corner if it creates... If you're close enough to the corner, you can actually combo off of it. Which is very big because a lot of characters don't have this. Yeah, 
which is huge because it does more damage than a normal throw and it also builds you this much meter well the combo i did is probably suboptimal but that don't worry about that what's important is you're using using your combo to build meter off of a throw which is huge because the only characters who can combo off throw in this game are arcrid red arcrid and miyaka nobody else can do that so far uh technically power tl but she needs to air throw you and she also needs um moon drag however the other three characters i just mentioned can just do this well, Red Arc and Arc, we can do this in the corner. Miyaka could do this anywhere on the screen as long as she throws you on the crowd. But yeah. Um If you want information about who to watch to play this character, there's Nico Nico May, there's Red Blade in his many aliases, uh, there's Roger with a W, there's Key from Japan. There's a couple other people I'm missing, but if people in the comments are nice, they'll put them down there and you can figure out where to go. Or you can also go to the uh, website melty.games. It's a database for type Lumina. You can go there and look for the other Arcrid players. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully, this uh, this goes pretty well. I'm not editing any of this. I'm just gonna put it right on YouTube. So if there's any issues, please let me know so I can refine this for the rest of the cast. All right, everybody. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you later. Take it easy. Peace. Bye.